recruiting process is new today in today's day and age. Uh, you know, you never really stop anymore. It's kind of crazy. And they add an extra weekend to uh, the recruiting season uh, for having that fir first weekend after January as a day uh, to bring in any mid-year or transfer uh, portal players as well. So we, we definitely use that. So since the last, since the, the first signing period, uh, we've added 21 uh, more players uh, to our program, um, and so we've we've added um, nine defensive players to our program and 12 offensive players to our program. Um, you know, uh, in all my other years of recruiting, uh, I believe the most scholarships I had to give that were initial scholarships, I think, was 14 uh, because we were blue shirting all the other guys, and so this year. We've been able to, you know, add, you know, 30 plus, actually 39 new faces to our program. So that's how much of a dramatic difference uh, the new legislation has made for us to finally catch up on initial scholarships. And so now we don't have to blue shirt, which was bringing kids in on unofficials, you know, have to have them pay their own visits, you know, not being able to promise them anything until they got here and so on and so forth. So the whole dynamics of our recruiting has changed immensely and it's been, you know, very, very good for us. So, um, but very busy, you know, very busy time. So of the, of the um, 21 new guys that we did bring in since our last uh, meeting, there's four, four more defensive linemen uh, that we brought in into the program, uh, you know, starting off with Chase Bibbler, uh, a junior college player that's a, a good sized uh, defensive interior uh, lineman that uh, is here with us now, you know, because some of these guys have had, had been with us over the break, um, you know, but I couldn't, they weren't, they hadn't signed by the uh, first initial signing period, and so they've been, you know been added to the program since that. So Chase is here with us, you know, working out right now. Uh, we're excited about what he brings to the program as well. Kanias Vaughn is a defensive end uh, that that we picked up. Um, Alice Saddleback, that is, um, you know, a tremendous player. We he ha was. Um, uh, very, very productive as far as sacks, and, and, and at the end of the season, he was he made all conference there. Uh, was just a true was just a true freshman and played as a true freshman. Was a qualifier coming out of high school, very, very productive pass rusher, um, and made all conference. And, and so um, we're going to use him to be a good pass rusher off the edge. Added some, you know, some speed there to that position. And then two other uh, interior guys, Joey Lightfoot, who's a high school player out of College Station. Um, we're really, really looking forward to Joey coming in the program. Joey is a power lifter, and the numbers that he has put together in the power lifting scene, he should win the state championship this year in power lifting, but his totals are incredible. He's, and, you know, obviously these are competitive lifts that are verified, but his bench, I think, is four thir his last meet, it was 435. His squat was 600. And 50, I think, and his deadlift was 590 pounds, and so, and uh, we ha we had actually got to time him at the Houston, uh, one of the Houston mega camps, and we actually had one of our coaches with a watch on him at the camp, and he ran a 495 as a defensive lineman at 305 pounds with those kind of powerlifting numbers. So, really, you know, really looking forward to having him in the program, and then uh, Raekwon Thompson, out of Blinn, you know, we've kept our Blinn connection uh, alive. I'm really proud of our tradition with Blinn. You know, I've been recruiting Blinn since the early mid 90s. Just Michael Bishop, who we recruited out of Blinn, just made the College Football Hall of Fame. So there's great tradition going back to Blinn and how we've been able to recruit that that college. And and uh, Raekwon, we felt like when we watched film this year, we felt like he was probably one of the very very best defensive tackles that that we watched across the whole country on film and uh you know we you know it's been a been a battle to get him but he had just committed uh to us uh this weekend and um he weighed in at 320 pounds you know 6'3 320 but he can really move and really run well um so we feel like that gives us eight additional 
uh, members to our defensive line in this year's signing class. And so we lost Kelton and Jadrian, uh, you know, and Blake Thompson, who we felt like were really good players, but we've added eight additional guys that we think is going to, you know, double our depth on the defensive line going, in, going into next season. So we feel really, really good about how we're able to bolster that position. Uh, we added uh, five more defensive backs, um, you know, to the program. Uh, the one I'm one, you know, excited about all of one that I'm really, truly uh, excited about is uh, A.J. Odoms, who started every game last year for New Mexico. And obviously, you know, we had um, seen him play and saw what he, you know, he started on the number 46 ranked defense in college football. And was a guy that we, you know, studied a bunch of film on, obviously, because we played them two years in a row. And we thought A.J. was, you know, a lockdown cover corner. So really pleased to get him. He's here in the program you know, with us already. So he adds some more additional depth to our corner position, especially with um, uh, Tory Richardson coming back. And then, of course, uh, you know, Amir Boyd and, and Latrez and all the other guys that, that are back at that position. So we feel like we're really got a chance to be, you know, extremely uh, strong at that position. And then we added four safeties, three of them, uh, three junior college safeties. Um, Jaleel Evans was a guy that uh, had – committed to us on the first signing period, but didn't want to uh, announce it till he told his family on Christmas Eve. So he told his family on Christmas Eve and then uh, had signed with us, but we just didn't announce it in the first class. Jaleel's been here working out for us. Uh, he looks like Kobe Hilton. You know, he's a 200 pound plus safety and uh, had a ton of production, bunch of interceptions for San Francisco City College last year. And so really looking forward to him you know, getting, making an immediate impact uh, on, our, on our secondary. And then Lance Russell just got a commitment out of Lance from Mount Sac, another Mount, Mount Sac uh, signee for us. Lance was just here, and he was uh, measured at uh, uh, six. We measured him at 6'3", but I think we're listing him a little bit shorter than that, and 220 pounds. And uh, his daddy is Leonard Russell, who was a first-round pick uh, uh, and the NFL Rookie of the Year and played six years in the NFL. And so Leonard was on the visit with Lance, and uh, you all probably remember Leonard as a, as a Rookie of the Year uh, NFL fullback, 235-pound fullback. So we're really looking forward to Lance getting here. Lance won't be here uh, until uh, June 1st, but he'll be able to come June 1st. He's already eligible and qualified uh, to come, but he won't be here until June 1st. And so looking forward you know, definitely looking forward to, to what he's going to add, you know, to the safety position as well. And then uh, Josiah Dye is a, is a high school safety uh, slash corner safety that we looked at that uh, we felt like um, gave us a ver lot of versatility in the secondary with what he brings, uh, brings to, uh, to our program. Uh, is fast enough to play corners, got the size to play safety. Uh, is really, really a physical tackler for us as well. And, um, you know, thought of all the high school guys we watched on tape, we thought he was the best of all the uh, corner slash safety versatile players for us. So uh, really looking forward to him. Jace Hunter uh, is another safety that came at mid-year, is in our system right now from Saddleback that we didn't announce at the last signing class. So he's one of the additional 21 that we've added to the program that's here. And, and will be with us in the spring. So that, that rounds out the additional uh, defensive players that we've added uh, since the last time that we got together, last time I was able to announce any of our additions to our program. So really, really pleased about that. I think that gives us seven uh, defensive backs that we've added uh, to the program, again, uh, addressing any needs that we might have there, and then four linebackers that we've added to the program. So eight D linemen, four linebackers, uh, and, and seven defensive backs. Um, and most of them are here on campus right now. Just a few of them are, aren't, aren't here yet, which is really good for spring ball. Um, and I've talked about the ones that are here and the ones that will get here You know, once June 1st or, or May 29th rolls around in actuality of when we start. Uh, switching over to offense, we, we added three more offensive linemen uh, to, to the program, which is always important to get offensive linemen. Always, I feel like, the hardest position to, to recruit. A.J. Barton was a gray shirt for us. You know, he's uh, actually with us now and training with us is here. Came at mid-year. Um, 
and is doing a really nice job. Very, very athletic, real long uh, player for us. Has got great potential. Reminds us of a young Zuri Henry is who he looks like and moves like. So um, really pleased about what A.J. brings to the table. Nick Scalise is a guy that uh, uh, we've been recruiting for a long time. You know, he we started working on him last year, and he's a uh, was a really fine uh, left tackle at Sierra College. And Nick was the guy that, uh, again, we, we committed and signed after the first signing day in between uh, you know, using, using that first weekend in January that I spoke of uh, to bring him in and to get him to, to make the decision to come. And so uh, he's, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six left tackle that moves well. And we're really pleased about what uh, – you know what Nick is is adding to our program for sure, and then um, you know our last uh, O lineman Jake Utley um, is very you know tall, very athletic uh, uh, tackle. We we had you know we watched his film. He's big and long and got an 80 inch reach, but but uh, we had him put together a drill tape for us too. And his drill tape, he moved extremely, extremely well. And um, he comes out of College Station too. So between Jake and Joey, you know, we had them in two weekends ago. Their families, tremendous families. They're both young offensive and defensive linemen that we felt like we couldn't get, we couldn't find any better prospects. They're, you know, out of the mold of the Andrew Andrew Meyer, Elijah Klein type of young prospects uh, in our program that we f- feel like are going to really develop and be really good players for us. So feel really good about adding six total offensive linemen uh, in, in totality to, um, to, to this year's class. And then, you know, our next emphasis was running back. And as you know, we like to play multiple running backs. And and uh, we sure feel good, you know, about Dion and then, you know, Mike Franklin who came in. Mike, you know, I talked about before, but he's in our program now, 230. And Mike ran our fastest 10-yard dash of anybody on the team at a 152. So he's really showing up quickly to be, you know, a, a guy that's going to be, you know, a tremendous player for us. But we felt like we added Ezel Jolly, a running back out of Ridge Point, And, he, and Ezel is uh, – is, um, Got good size, good speed. His film was, imp- you know, very, very impressive. He's had he had Power Five offers. He's a very similar type of offer uh, offers that Dion had, you know, and and, and we landed him and, and really like what he's going to do for us and and has a chance to come in and contribute early. I mean, he really does. I think all of our high school running backs that we signed have a chance to come in and contribute early. You know, and we have Torrance Burgess and Cartraven there, you know, as well as Mike and Dion. But we feel like these these high school guys got a chance to really uh, contribute. And uh, Karan Gossett is um, 215 pounds. And if you guys watch his highlight tape, the first run, I think he broke eight tackles his first run. And, and you could just see the power. And he came on his visit, and he's got explosive, huge, huge legs and just one of those low center of gravity power runners that, again, we feel like could contribute and have a chance to help us as a true freshman uh, in our rotation. And then Joshua Dye is Josiah Dye's twin brother. Um, uh, from Phoenix and, and and Josh again is a is a guy that you know he's got some stuff of him dunking on Twitter uh, over the top of one of his offensive linemen at a halftime event and he's just a tremendous tremendous athlete and uh, can't wait to get both Josiah and Josh into the program and then Darion Trish was a young man at NEO a running back at NEO that uh, came between sessions and is actually here now as well. Uh, competing for a running back spot, and he was a, a really talented running back that was going to get pretty highly recruited out of NEO, and he got hurt in, after game five, and so he didn't play the rest of the season, and so it kind of opened up an opportunity for us to get him and get him you know, in our program, so we feel really good uh, about uh, our running back's uh, position now, guys, because basically we're nine deep uh, at running back when you put all those together. So um, we've really tried to hit our areas. That, that, that are of need. And, and then uh, going to wide receiver, you know, we added five wide receivers since we last got together uh, into our program. Giovanni Gardier is here now. Uh, he's a, a guy that had an outstanding uh, freshman season uh, at Diablo Valley. 
Uh, his biggest games were against the best people, you know, against San Mateo, who won the state championship in California. I think he had 10 to 11, 10 or 11 against San Francisco College. Same thing, 10 or 11. He's just uh, uh, one of you know, big time player with good speed, good length to him, good athleticism. Uh, and like I said, he's here now competing. And then we picked up Dre Spriggs from UT uh, San Antonio in, in the transfer portal. And Dre was a guy that his high school film was off the charts, and he was, you know, planning on being a starter this year at UTSA. But all three of UTSA starters are coming back. All three of those guys that had a chance to go into the league have all decided to come back this year and play. And so he saw that that was going to limit his opportunities there. And so he 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 jumped in the portal, and we were able to grab him out of the portal as quickly as we could. It happened real quick on that same weekend we were talking about there. I think he jumped in the portal like January 3rd, 4th, 5th. We brought him in on that weekend and, and got him here uh, right after that. So um, really, really excited about him. And then we've added three high school uh, receivers, Jackson Wang out of Orange Lutheran. And uh, uh, Jackson is 6'2", six t- six two, 210, big physical athletic uh, receiver that uh, just has that strength that you want uh, to come in and, and be a guy that's going to make the contested physical catches for you. Deshaun Adams is another one uh, that we signed out of Brookshire Royal. And, and Brookshire Royal is a, is a school that used to be out in the uh, out in the country a little bit in Houston. It's out where I lived when I was at U of H. And now that whole area is full sheer and Brookshire, all that area is growing up. And Deshaun was a guy that was his, he just jumped off the tape with his run after catch ability and his speed after the catch. Um, and so, you know, he's coming in in this year's class as well. And then Jaleel Boast, a local Pebble Hills uh, pro- uh, product, is, is uh, coming into our program. Jaleel was at our camp, has really good speed. We really like uh, what Jaleel brings to the table. Uh, kudos to Coach Torres. I thought uh, Pebble Hills really represented the city of El Paso with their great, uh, you know, uh, performance that they had uh, in the playoffs this year. So really proud of what uh, what uh, Coach Torres does there and, and, and looking forward to getting a, a Pebble Hills player uh, within our system. And so all told, guys, that's 39 new guys, 21 uh, new ones since the break, um, and, uh, and, and really added, you know, some good, you know, three tight ends, six offensive linemen, a quarterback, five running backs and five receivers on the offensive side of the ball. So that in total, you know, gets us to our 39. Uh, right now, Coach Price is actively recruiting a couple, you know, one kicker slash punter uh, to add to our program right now uh, as we speak. And, you know, those will come, those additions will probably come in, in March and April. So that get, gives, you know, everybody a good, uh, you know, an update on where we are through recruiting. But like I said, a whole different world for us rather than having to offer all the blue shirts and have 14 initials to deal with. So really excited to, to see these, these guys. Uh, most of them are here, uh, not all of them, but uh, some of them will be here uh, and make a big impact uh, on June 1st. And, and most of them are pretty, of uh, the junior college guys there, most of them are, are, are qualified already, you know, just finishing up, they'll finish up their schoolwork right now. So, and then we'll open up to questions from there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know what's changed is the landscape, and I think you know. Can you have a, co- a conversation about college football and not talk about the transfer portal? The transfer portal has been uh, a positive thing uh, in so many ways for us because it's allowed to us to create some more scholarships in our program. So basically, what's happened is we've had some guys that have been third and fourth string players for us that have entered the transfer portal, and when they do that then that allows us to replace the scholarship immediately. That's new legislation that had come in, and I think that's a, a secret sauce really to a program that kids that have an opportunity to maybe play somewhere else that are buried in your depth chart, they don't have to sit 
you know, they can go somewhere else and have an opportunity to play. So that's helped us, you know, uh, with our numbers and well, as well. And then the other thing that's helped us is the fact that you can sign over 25 now, right? So now uh, with the new legislation, you can you can sign as many as you need to sign, and, and you just have to be at your 85 number of scholarships by the first day of classes. And so that legislation that has been added has really given us a chance to uh, improve the quality of our program. I mean, the quality of our, our athleticism right now in our program, uh, as you come out and see spring ball, it's significantly better than it's going to have been at any time. It's not even going to be close, so I'm really excited about that part of it. Yeah, that's it's always it's always really you know uh, interesting you know mix to try to figure out. But we added ten high school guys to this class, you know, of the twenty one that we added, and uh, so I think the numbers are ten high school, nine JC, and two transfer guys. And so to me, it was um, we felt like it's kind of crazy the talent that's out there in high school right now, right? It's crazy how talented the players are available. Uh, to get, and we are all shocked. Uh, we we feel like that, and we all know why, right? Because so many people are living in the transfer portal, right? That not only has it affected junior college recruiting and how much better you can do in junior college, but also how much better you can do in the high school, uh, as long as you're, you know, very, you know, selective on what you do with it. So with us, we felt like, you know, we wanted to add ten guys to certain positions. But when I talk about some of those high school guys, these guys are so talented. That they can, they they might all have a chance. There's not very many of them that is a project type of guy. You know, I don't ever want to pin somebody down. But of these ten, there's quite a few. Like I talked about, I don't know if any of those running backs we signed. Those, those three guys are all plenty talented enough to get into the mix this year. I mean, they're going to be hard guys to keep off the field, and it just goes on uh, for you know Josiah Die in the secondary, one of the one of the few high school guys that we signed in in the, in the secondary. I, you know, he's he's a tremendous player too, so he might be able to get in there. So that the talent pool is so good right now that we felt like in the high school that we wanted to take guys that we felt like could, you know, make an immediate impact and are pretty close to being ready, uh, ready to play for us at this point. So, but it is, it's very, it's a very interesting landscape out there for someone that's been in the business for a while and to see it and to get a good, you know, understand it and have a good feel what's going on with it. I think we've got a really good strong grasp on, on, on how we need to attack it. And, and we felt like our plan this year worked out really, really well for us. Out of all these recruits, how, how many did you look at as immediate impact type of players? Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, if I look at it, there's probably only in the whole class um, guys that wouldn't help either on special teams or in our two deep. There's probably only three to four guys that I think are going to be guys that would have to redshirt, would want to redshirt this year uh, in order to develop. Now, we'll redshirt more of them for obvious reasons, but the other 34, you know, let's say five, the other 34 are guys that could come in and, and help us right away. With uh, the transfer portal, like you mentioned, with the high school prospects that you're talking about, how is the COVID fifth year kind of affecting the program? Yeah. I'm sure you've all have graduated right. from those guys and retaining maybe yeah, well, the, the, the big way that the COVID has affected us is that it's allowed some of our top tremendous players to remain in the program, right? That's been, that's been you know, because I was just, I, I was sitting there thinking, you know, um, Elijah Klein and, and Zuri Henry and, and Andrew Meyer are coming into their sixth season with us, right? I mean, those guys are three really, really good old linemen that have been with us. For, this will be their sixth season season, right? Isn't that tremendous to have those guys like that? And Elijah and Zuri will be their sixth season of playing because they, they started four games as freshmen, as true freshmen. And so to have that kind of, and then you got Praise and you got Tyrese, right, that are taking advantage of these these COVID years, you know, guys that, you know, are trem just tremendous, tremendous players for us. Keenan Stewart is taking advantage of the COVID year, you know, to be back for another year. So those are guys that, you know, you always say, you know, they're going to get better and better. Well, <clears throat> these guys now have a chance to play a sixth year of college football for us. And so that part of it has been really, you know, really, really good to uh, 
add to just our experience of our roster. And, and um, you know, I'm probably forgetting some guys that are just great players, you know, off the top of my head right now that are in that sixth year type of uh, uh, spot in our program right now. But it's, but it's just tremendous what those guys are adding to, to us, you know, and adding to our program. So really, really pleased to have those guys back as the nucleus of our, of our football team for sure. Yeah, that's that's a good question, Brett. You know, um, <clears throat> that's great. You know, as we start to look at it, you know, I mentioned I mentioned Mike. You know, at running back, uh, for sure, uh, Julio Evans. You know, and Oscar Moore, two of our safeties that have come in, are just looking uh, really, really explosive. And they're both they're both 200 plus pound safeties that are already here in our program. Uh, and practicing and then of course you know AJ Odoms has come in and really you know hit the ground running like you would expect a guy that started you know for for a really good defense last year I feel like he's you know making making a, a big impact for us and I like our two D tackles that are here you know KJ Johnson and Dimitri Madden I like what those guys you know are bringing to the table and more than anything the depth that we added at linebacker, right? Because those four linebackers are all adding to the depth. And, and uh, you know, we got Tyrese coming back, but James Neal was our second most athletic linebacker last year, and he chose the red shirt, so he'd have two more years. James is looking like we expected him, and Jerome's coming back off the injury, but we added those four linebackers. So all of a sudden, you know what our depth was at linebacker last year. That's not even a question this year, you know? So. Um, I think we've added a lot that way. So, but to talk about particular guys, you know, I, I mentioned plenty right there. You know, that are looking good and, and doing some good things for us. Oh, good question. Yeah, that's a good question of who he's comparable to. He runs a little bit. He runs a little bit. Um, he's. Uh, He's got a little bit different style to him. I'm trying to think if we have anybody that has his type of, uh, of style that we've had, you know, here uh, since I've been here. Not, not really, you know, not really anybody I can compare him to um, as far as his style of rushing. But he's contrast to the other two that we brought in, you know, Karan and, 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 um, and Josh, they're run right through you guys, you know what I mean? And, and I – uh, the pro I was so proud because I thought that UTEP had the two hardest running hardest running running backs in Conference USA last year, you know, and I don't get to see other people play, but I thought that Ronnie Awa and Deion Hankins were the two hardest running guys in the conference each and every weekend they ran with a physicality to them that was incredible and fun to watch. And so I think those, you know, I think we've added, we're adding to that uh, as we go through the mix with Ad and Mike and those other three guys. So that's why I said, those are the three guys that I think all could play for us this year in some uh, form or fashion, and that's not counting out Torrance and Cartraven. But Torrance is a guy we can use as a slot receiver to Torrance Burgess because he did that at Tyler, but we redshirted Torrance last year as well. Yes. Oh, it's great. You know, we're always going to – we are always going to um, evaluate uh, – more the guys in El Paso. Well, they're they're going to get a, a stronger evaluation from us uh, because it's easier to do it. It's easier to evaluate. It's obviously there for us, uh, and we're going to take them because they're really good players, and we're 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 not going to take them because we feel like they're not good enough players, and we're not going to do anything based on uh, whether what their proximity is. Right? I mean, we're going to evaluate them extremely hard. We're not going to overlook anybody. We're not going to miss anybody, but we're sure not going to take anybody um, uh, that's not talented enough because of their proximity. But we're definitely going to give opportunities to a lot of the guys in El Paso to come into our program and to do what Ray Flores did and to walk on into our program and, and to be uh, superstar players that Ray Flores was and superstar individuals, you know, and that opportunity is always there, but it's only there for some because, you know, we're not going to bring a guy uh, into the program unless we feel like we're doing him due, due diligence by giving him the opportunity to play because he's good enough, right? You don't want to bring a guy in the program and he's just not good enough when he can go to another level 
right? And that's one of the prides I have as a college football coach is I always try to think about the kids first, you know, and, and that's the, the blessing that you have to understand that you have as a head coach. You better be thinking about the kids first. And so to me it's really important to make sure that each kid gets to the level that they're best fit to play at too. So that's a long answer to that question, but it's an important thing for me. Yep. Coach, what's the spring football timeline look like? Yeah, we're going to start uh, on February 28th. We're going to go Tuesday, February 28th, with a real light practice early in the morning because it's an unusual day for us to practice. Um, so we go just like we did last year. We're going to go early, early in the morning on that day and do a lighter practice because of the NCAA legislation that requires that. And then we'll start up Wednesday, uh, uh, March 1st at, on, uh, at 9 o'clock, and we'll go every Wednesday, Friday. Monday after that. Our Monday practices will be at 925. Uh, they'll start at 925. Our Wednesday Fridays will start at 9. Then they'll be after week two. It'll be spring break and then we'll have three more weeks after spring break with the uh, spring game um, being uh, on Friday, April 7th. So that's the, that's the schedule for everybody. Uh, and of course it'll be out there for everybody to see but that's kind of that's that's not kind of that's what it is and that's where, where it is right now. Um, for everybody to set their calendars. So looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll have some, uh, you know, last year we practiced in the snow, right? So we had, as you guys remember, and then we played FIU and it was colder than all, who knows what, and it helped us, right? So uh, the, the, the different weather patterns that you get here, I think are an advantage to us in a lot of ways. Coach, what's the time frame on an offensive coordinator? Yeah, um, you know, I don't know what I can comment about publicly on that, but just, you know, uh, I'm most likely going to hire from within. You know, that's most likely what I'm going to do. I don't know if I can make any official comments on that, but you know, that's my style, and that's what I'm going to do. Dave, Dave retired. Dave had a, Dave. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up so I could talk about Dave. Dave had a retirement home in in South Georgia that was pretty hard for him to leave, and uh, and he came here for a couple years and did us a, a, a tremendous, tremendous job, and. Um, he was the, the retirement life was just calling his name way too much, and uh, he's going to go back to that retirement, beautiful retirement home, and spend it with his beautiful wife and, and enjoy, uh, and not you know not planning right now to coach any more football unless some you know crazy opportunity came up for him that that you know uh, you know as we all say you retire and then you might not retire right but he's but that's Dave's plan right now and so um, you know obviously I always like to uh, promote from within when I can. You know, there's obviously things that keep me from announcing things in any certain fashion. You know, I got to do due diligence to the process and all that stuff. But that's that's the that's the plans. So.